Hey everybody, hopefully all of you are doing well. Today we're going to be making the oven method version to the video that I did over the summer where we smoked some crab legs on the grill. One of the biggest questions that I got was, I don't have a grill, can I do this in the oven? And the answer is absolutely. That's what we're going to be doing today and hopefully I can answer the other questions that I needed to address about the clarified butter, crab legs, and shrimp, and all that other good stuff. So let's get into it. So first I started by cleaning my shrimp. These are shrimp that were not cleaned. I bought them with the shell on and tail on. Um, I took them home and I deveined them. As you can see, that's what I'm doing now. And I removed the legs off of the bag and cleaned them up really good. Um, the last video we didn't use shrimp at all, but you totally can, it's up to you. This is the size 21, 25. And I'll remind everybody later what that means. Are you listening? One of the biggest questions that I get whenever I use crab legs, and I've only used snow crab legs and king crab legs so far. Um, I do plan on switching that up. But those particular two, snow crab and king crab, part of the processing for snow crab and king crab is to steam them, cool them down, and then they are flash frozen, boxed, and sold to the consumer. Okay, that's the way those are usually handled because they're quite big and sometimes can be dangerous to handle. I mean, if you find a fishmonger that'll sell you live king crab, I wish you the best of luck and good eating. <laughs> and in order for you to do that, you probably live near the coast where you can go to the beach and buy these uh, live crab and have access to them like that. And then sometimes you have the fishmongers that won't sell um, these whole live crab to you. They might kill them for you first and then give them to you and let you take them home. Um, now the other crab legs, blue crab and things like that, you can buy live kill them, clean them, and then you can use them how you want. Remember, I'm speaking of snow crab and king crab legs. Those particular two, when you buy them, nine times out of 10, they have been pre-cooked. Just read the tag, bag, or box when you're purchasing them. Man, you wouldn't believe how many questions I get about these crab legs. I mean, really, I'm just gonna direct everybody to this video when they ask. <laughs> Moving on to our links. I am using chicken andouille sausage. It is my favorite chicken andouille sausage to use. I get it from Trader Joe's. You get four of them for like five bucks and they work out really well. Now I'm just scoring them with a knife. In this particular recipe, I also use potatoes again. Same thing. I just took some red potatoes, cleaned them up, cut them in half and parboiled them just until a fork can enter in with a little bit of resistance. And then I stop the cooking process because those are gonna go in the oven in the bag that we're gonna be using. Clarified butter, I got a lot of questions about the clarified butter. When they saw me use this method, some people were like, why didn't you just use a cheesecloth and pour the butter through a cheesecloth? Well, I knew that wouldn't work because we use a very low heat and have those milk solids sitting on the top and they're very small. See, we didn't boil the butter. We did it very slowly, let the milk solid separate, and we got a very clear product. So I took the same butter um, after we slowly melted the butter and let the milk solids come to the top, and I did just that, and I want you to see what's gonna happen. You're still getting milk solids through the cheesecloth because they're too small. For you to effectively use the cheesecloth, what you'd have to do is basically boil the butter. See, and that's not what we want. We have milk solids in there if we use the cheesecloth my way. If you want to use a cheesecloth, you would have to boil that butter to where the milk solids would bubble at the top and you would get that. However, when you use that, what's going to happen is you're going to cut the cooking time down on how you're going to be able to use the butter later. So if you wanted to saute vegetables and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to do that because you used all the cooking time boiling the butter, trying to save yourself a step and using that cheesecloth. So, I mean, it's up to you, but this was more effective for what I was trying to go for, for the seafood. Lastly, you can shut both of those methods down by just buying some ghee. The reason why I didn't use ghee in the first place, and I knew about it, was because somebody is gonna tell me I live in so-and-so country and I can't get my hands on it. Well, I use the butter method because I know for the most part, all of us, no matter what country you're watching this video from, you can get your hands on some butter. That way, if I teach you this way, you've learned that effective method, okay? And then if you see ghee, well, there you go. It's already done for you, and then you can move forward with the recipe, okay? So that's why I have a method to my madness. I know sometimes I don't explain every step, but that's what it is. Finally, when you get your clarified butter, just season it up. This will all be on the written recipe. And what I'm gonna do is add this method to the other recipe that already exists. So you'll have both the smoking method on the grill and the oven method. 
For the exact measurements to this recipe, be sure and check out gdseasoning.com. The link will be in the description and pinned in the comments. This is how you cheat the smoky flavor with the oven method. Add some liquid smoke, that's all you have to do. All right, so that'll be on the recipe. To make this recipe in the oven, we're gonna be using oven bags. These are the same bags that you would put a turkey in or roast or um, something like that. Very effective and easy to use. I'm using the large size bags and that makes it much easier to fit everything you want to go in there per person. So it's one bag per person. And then you slow the shot down and then you pour the butter right over all of the food. Hmm. Okay, so then we are going to tie a knot in the bag. Not just any knot, but a knot that will still allow the bag to vent. Because if you don't, the bag is gonna get nice and um, gonna blow up like a balloon and that always made me nervous so I just made sure I tied the bag in a way where I can still have a hole just so it can vent it'll be fine so now if you're only doing a couple of bags you can put the bags in a 9 by 11 or 9 by 13 if you're doing multiple bags you can put them on a tray and then that way you know they have more space to cook we're gonna bake the bags at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 35 minutes please keep in mind that if you have more food in there it could take longer okay at the end of the cooking time, once everything in the bag is done, now we want to add our shrimp. I didn't, if you notice, I didn't add the shrimp in earlier because the shrimp would have been way overcooked in there for that um, length of time had they been in there. So we just add the shrimp last, toss them around in the bag, try not to break the bag, <laughs> and then tie the knot back in it. And we're just going to put it back in the oven for about another 10 minutes or so. The shrimp don't need that long to cook. And so this is the best method that I've found to keep the shrimp tender and everything else is delicious as well. So it, it'll be fine. Really quick while our seafood bake is finishing up in the oven, we're gonna talk about shrimp really quick. The numbers on shrimp, when you see 1315, that represents the size of the shrimp, not the number in the bag. Are you listening? Okay, always remember that. That is the number of shrimp per pound, not the number in the bag. So when you turn them over, if I have 13 15s, as you can see, those are quite large. So the smaller the number, the bigger the shrimp. These are just some random shrimp I like to keep in the freezer for my salads. <laughs> All right, so our seafood bake is done nice and bubbly. It's time to eat. You can eat straight out the bag. You can eat them in a nice bowl. You can serve them up any way you like. It doesn't matter. I knew when I started to use this bowl, I didn't know whether I liked it or not, but I just went with it. As you can see, this bowl is quite deep in the middle, which is where all of the sauce ended up going. And then the seafood was on top around the rim of the bowl. But it's just for video's sake. You guys can see what I'm actually working with. You get the point. All right. And if you do the two bags in one nine by 13 and serve it up, that's totally doable too. It's up to you. Just eat it and enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You know, I appreciate it when you always come cook with me and hang out. Don't forget this recipe and others can be found at gdseasoning.com and I'll see you next time.